Thanks for joining us. This is our extended interview with Tom Martin, the CEO and founder at LawDroid and co-founder of the American Legal Technology Awards. The first part of this video is from our GNGF Live, which happens every other Wednesday over on our Facebook page. The second part here, in this bonus extended interview, we dive into a lot more detail on where the practice of the law is heading. If you already saw the live, I'll put the timestamp to the exclusive extended interview below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can follow along with all of our great conversations on legal marketing and the business side of running a law firm. Welcome to GNGF Live, your bi-weekly Ask the Experts about all things law firm marketing and business growth. I'm Mark Homer, author of Online Law Practice Strategies and founder of Get Notice, Get Found. GNGF Live is brought to you by the Legal Marketing Academy. Learn more about how the Legal Marketing Academy's training and coaching is helping law firm owners who are looking to grow beyond $500,000 in revenue at gngf.com slash academy. On this show, we focus on the business side of growing and running your law firm. So I'm excited to have today's guest, Tom Martin, founder of LawDroid and co-founder of the American Legal Technology Awards. At LawDroid, Tom helps law firms use automation to capture more leads and take more clients, automate more documents, and ultimately just deliver a better client experience. In fact, Tom developed the PatBot for a mutual client of ours, Patrick Palace of Palace Law. So I asked him to join us to talk about that and much, much more. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to our page, not just the video, so you can get updated when our next episode goes live. And of course, it never hurts for you to show just a little love and please hit that like button on the video too. It really does help us a lot. We've got moderators in the chat, so please ask questions and interact during the premiere. And if you're watching this in the future after the premiere, we do monitor the comments and we will reach out to our guests and answer any follow-up questions you have. That's because we love you all and we love getting to meet you online and I'm excited to say we'll be in person again soon. So you can find a list of our upcoming webinars, CLEs, or all our other events where we'll be speaking over on our website at gngf.com slash events. We have an extensive library of videos, including our extended GNGF Live interviews, as well as our uh, in-depth GNGF tip series, where we dive into specific marketing topics over on our YouTube channel. And you can watch those videos, well, after this interview, of course, at that link in the chat. All right, let's get to the interview. Tom Martin, thanks for joining me today. Hey, Mark, pleasure to be here. So, uh, uh, yeah, like just, just I, I mentioned this in uh, earlier, but uh, we have a mutual client, um, Patrick Palace, and uh, uh, you know, you guys created the PatBot forum, and uh, you know, so we have that on his website and stuff. That, that's great. But uh, uh, real quick, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, how you how you got started with LawDroid. Yeah, happy to. So, uh, I'm originally from Los Angeles. I now live in Vancouver with my wife and two girls, and uh, that's been for the past eight years. LawDroid got started about five years ago, and uh, basically it started as a way to reach out to consumers directly to allow them to create a corporation on their own. And it was, I have to admit, a bit of an experiment, and uh, I really wanted to see how people responded to it. And you'll probably remember at the time, chatbots were kind of a new thing then. Right. And also, because of that, because it being new, a lot of people didn't know what to make of it. And so when you would talk to, when I would talk to lawyers about chatbots back then, they kind of scratched their heads and say, chat what, or chat, you know, uh, they didn't get the idea. In the past five years, it's definitely changed. It's become a much more known quantity. And so I'm very excited about the future of what we're doing because finally, kind of like the expectation of what it can do and what we can do, they match up and people are starting to get it. Yeah, this whole like people starting to get it, right? I mean, I, I, I you consumers now are coming across chatbots across all other kind of websites and, and interactions with uh, in, in all kinds of businesses. So uh, yeah, the, 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 as that consumer expectation lifts up, I think that helps a lot. So I've heard you talk before about the LawDroid Manifesto. Uh, tell me more about that or for the audience especially. Well, the LawDroid Manifesto is something that I'm going to be releasing in September. Uh, but the long and short of it is that the Manifesto is about using automation to make lawyers' lives better. And the concept is that we're not trying to replace lawyers. What we're trying to do is we're trying to help lawyers be better lawyers. So by automating everything that's possibly automatable, if that's a word, uh, we can help lawyers to be better lawyers so they can focus on the stuff that's most important. That's awesome. And then you said it's coming out uh, September? Correct. Awesome. Um, so so let's, let's talk about you know like automation and stuff. So what are some of the 
the like the biggest pain points? I mean, because there's probably a number of things you can automate, right? So, what are some of the big pain points you start with that are that you do to try to help lawyers? Uh, you know, like you said, automate as much as they can so they can work on more important things. Yeah. So again, the concept that everything that can be automated will be automated in the future, and the future is now. And so the pain points that lawyers experience, and I can speak to this having been a lawyer myself for over 20 years, that, you know, there's various places in the, in the client journey where you can make it a much better experience. I think one of the number one complaints that lawyers get is that they don't communicate well. And so, you know, if you could automate that communication, you can lend itself to a much smoother ride for yourself and your client and give them a better experience of what it's like working with you. So the first step in the journey is always that initial contact. You know, they come to your website, they want to get more information. It's after hours, they're stressed out, you're not available. If there was a way to interact with them immediately, 24-7, 365, and have it reflect exactly your messaging, your brand, and um, give them a taste of what your firm is like, what your personality is like, um, that would be fantastic, right? And then on top of it, you can get a lead out of it, follow up with the lead, um, mm -hmm. and then close them. Now, once they're closed, now they're a client, you could do client intake using a bot. Right. And so there's all the steps through the journey, like checking in, if there's a milestone, some new things happening, but you want to explain to them what to expect at a deposition or a hearing, you could have the bot explaining that as well. Um, and then on top of that, you could also include document automation. So if there's any documents you need a client to, prov to provide information for, you could have the bot automate that and create those documents on the fly. Yeah, on the communication side, I, you know, I, I love this, this point of like, you know, helping lawyers be able to communicate, um, like kind of putting their best foot forward because you get to kind of really think about it, do it once, and then you get to be consistent, right? So that, you know, communication, you may have a great day of communication, you may have a bad day. You may have, like you said, you're, you're not available or it's just they caught you and you're in between things. But if you can really think about that, like kind of what's the best message at this moment? And then it, it's just consistent, right? You get that consistent communication going by automating. And so the way we try to do this, like the before picture of how lawyers are trying to do that right now, mm -hmm. is, the, you know, best case scenario, they have standard operating procedures, right? How many people right. actually do that? Not many, right. but hopefully they do have standard operating procedures and they have a script. And so if they start off a new assistant or a paralegal, here you go, this is how we do it, right? This is right. the checklist, this is the script, this is what you need to go through. Well, with a bot, what you're kind of getting is a new employee that you train with literally the same material. Here's the script. These are the questions you ask. This is the checklist of everything we need to gather first before we can do whatever it is that we need to do. And so you're right. You get to exactly streamline what that story is going to be, exactly how it's going to be presented, and get it right every single time. What's better than that is that because this is a, a messaging uh, application, there's a record of every message back and forth. So from a lawyer's standpoint, you know, lawyers are always worried about risk, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't necessarily know what the assistant said to the client or what the paralegal might have said, right? unless you're recording every phone call. And then they have to go through it and they have to find it. But when you have a chat bot, those messages back and forth, they're all logged. And so if there's ever any professional responsibility issue that, that comes up, you can look at it and you can say, Hey, look, it said to you, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just gathering this information, you know, to possibly take you on as a client. You see where it said that? And see where you said, yes, I acknowledge that. Well, that could be, that could come in real handy if there's ever right. questions. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of pain points and there's probably, you know, like the case studies you have you know, over and over of all the different examples of ways to use it. Um, I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, we talk later, it just, you know, what, what are those ways people are using it that kind of like took you by surprise, right? So, but before we jump there, like, let's talk about the actual platform itself, right? So the, the LawJoy platform, like what, what exactly is it? What does it do? And, and how do people kind of like interact with it? So the first thing I should mention is that we worked on it for the past five years. And the way we worked on it 
is a little different. We didn't, we didn't build it from the top down saying we think this is the best thing for you. The way we built it is we actually worked with different legal aid organizations and they reached out to thousands of people that needed legal help. And so we helped, helped them to build chatbots to assist those people. And through all of those lessons, we slowly built out our own software service platform, which is what we have available now for lawyers to make their own solutions. And so all of this really comes from a lot of lessons learned. And from my experience as a lawyer, being able to translate between these two worlds of law and technology. And so the different things it could do, it can automate a conversation, it could gather information, save that into the system, it could generate documents on the fly, it can also integrate with a lot of other systems. It could integrate with Clio, um, the Clio Managed CRM, a case management system. It also integrates with Clio uh, Grow. So your mm -hmm. leads come in, they go directly into the system. And most CRMs we can integrate with. And on top of that, we can also integrate into Zapier. And once you have right. that, you could extend yeah. to practically thousands of applications. Right. Yeah, no, I, I uh, love when people can in implement and integrate with Zapier or Zapier. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it just opens up that entire you know set of things like, well, do you integrate with this? Well, not natively, but you integrate with you know Zaps, and everything's open open for you. Um, so that's awesome. And the I mean the platform, you know, like it's there's almost like people can kind of drag and drop and build their own kind of chatbots there, or or are they requiring you guys to kind of code behind the scenes? Great question. So it's a no code platform, and we pride ourselves on its ease of use. Uh, we spent a lot of time getting it right. Um, and we're always open to improvement. But it is a drag and drop interface. If you can create a flowchart, you can create a bot. Um, and if anyone ever has difficulty in putting it together themselves, uh, we're happy to, to reach out and provide them with training. We, we also have a do it done for you service. So if they don't have the time to spend uh, putting it together themselves, we could do it for them. And uh, one other thing I'd mention about features, just to step back to the to the prior question is that I think that's really the honeypot there for what we do. Um, so many attorneys, we, we, we really don't have a choice but to make, to make decisions based on what we feel the numbers right. show, you know? A lot of times lawyers don't have the actual numbers of how many cases um, are of this subcategory or this one or that one or as clients are going through their whole journey with the attorney, we don't have feedback about every single step of the journey. Now, with what we do, the analytics that we gather, we actually know how people have answered every single question when they're coming through the bot. So you hear a lot of talk about data-driven decisions. Well, now we can right. actually do that because even from the get-go where somebody is interacting with the lead bot, where the, the, the bot is trying to capture them as a lead. Well, they get to categorize their, their interest in criminal law, PI, you know, workers' compensation. And then after that, we can answer some additional questions that are associated with those practice areas. And so the lawyer gets to dive, dive into all of those numbers and see where their clients are coming from, what kind of practice area help they need, and then how they've answered all of the additional questions that are thrown at them. And so that they can make data-driven decisions based on the actual numbers that they see. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, for those that, you know, that is like some serious nuggets of information there in terms of having this ability to to slice and dice. We talk about on June July with, you know, we've had other shows where we talk about, you know, like vanity metrics and everybody, you know, thinks about like what their top line revenue is or how many impressions their website has, which really don't matter. But when you can like get into that operational data, like knowing, you know, this many you know, percent of cases going a certain way or the others, you can ta tag that to some profitability now. You know which uh, leads are actually turning into clients at what type of case. So is marketing working, right? Like having something that can track that on its own and all the other things it does uh, is, is awesome. I, I never thought about that. That is, that's huge. Yeah, the automation is, is, is great. The document, you know, the automation of the conversation, the documents, all of that is great. But actually having that insight 
into how clients are actually interacting, what their interests are, and it makes you aware of a lot of different risks and pain points that you wouldn't otherwise be able to uncover unless right. you had that actual data. So yeah, we're really excited about that. And going back to the manifesto for a second, you know, part of it is also digital transformation. Our industry is one of the last to actually undergo digital transfer transformation. And I think a lot of attorneys have a bit of fear about how to do that properly. Like, how do you make that, that jump? And over the last 16 months, as you know, we've been dealing with this difficult situation of having to be available online and do it the right way. And I think a lot of people are turning to automation, automation to be able to make that transition. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like we've had a, a massive leap in, in um, people like implementing technologies that they never even thought about before. So uh, in, in the legal profession. And, uh, you know, I, one thing I, I see all the time and, um, you know, we, we talk about is like, I think a lot of people have act actually went out and done that, um, but nobody's really telling the consumer that they're doing it, right? And there's, there's a side, like if consumers want to interact with a, prof a professional, um, you know, through more digital means, whether it's a Zoom meeting or whether it's, you know, electronic signatures and documents that are in a portal or something, uh, and, and you have that capability, like, you should be telling everybody because that's how consumers want to work. I mean, that'd be a huge differentiator, right? You know, so if I come to your website and see that <clears throat> things are being captured electronically with a chatbot and stuff, like, I'm already inclined going, oh, that's how I interact with, like, everything else I do. Right. So I think that's a differentiator for a law firm. Yeah, it really is. It really is because people... They become used to, I mean, it's just the go-to. When you wake up in the morning, you look at your mobile phone and what's going on today? You message a friend, you know, maybe we're going to grab coffee. Um, if it's if things are opening back up in your area and you can <laughs> actually go and meet for coffee. Um, but this is the way we interact with each other. And so that's what we've taken advantage of is leveraging the messaging and using automation to make that much easier. So I want to come back to that because you, you mentioned replacing, you know, not replacing lawyers, right? But the, a lot of people get concerned when they start, you know, talking about technology and automating this and automating that, that, you know, we're looking to eventually replace lawyers. Like, what, what, do you t what is your answer to that? Because, I mean, I, I've heard that many times brought up in, in all along the way with this digital transformation. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a fear. It is a fear that, that gets kind of brought out every single time there's a technological innovation. Um, mm hmm you know, back a um, hundred years ago, the Industrial Revolution, people were worried about you know, the same thing, about bots, robots taking over, about mechanized machines just taking over the entire line of production. But the thing is, is that we've grown accustomed to that now, right? Like during the past hundred years, that didn't happen. What happened is it allowed, it allowed us to increase production, actually, and for people to have more jobs either working on the machines or making them better. Um, and it's freed people up to do more information work like we're doing as lawyers mm -hmm. without having to uh, be bound to one location or the other. And so it's the same thing with the information age. I mean, what this has done is it's allowed us to have a lot more freedom. I know attorneys, uh, myself included, who, you know, you can go on vacation to Europe for a month, month and a half and be plugged into your office through your laptop, still be making money, and be able to travel the world. I mean, that's something that I think information workers have as a huge advantage. Um, so the replacing lawyers is really just a fear, but I think once you really experience it practically and what it could do, you realize that it's not gonna replace you, that what it actually does is it allows you to extend your reach for you to do more with less. And I think if we look back at the analogy of somebody um, doing mechanical work, I think a farmer probably appreciated uh, the machines that allowed them to not have to break their back shoveling it all day long. So <laughs> right, it's, the right, same, right. it's the same thing for lawyers. If we can avoid the shoveling and replace that with a machine that could do that part for us, I believe it'd be much appreciated. Well, and, and not just for the lawyer. I mean, like, think about, you know, the, the, the staff at a, at a law firm, right? Instead of having to ask that exact same question over and over and over every time on the intake or on the, um, you know, the, the, the new client, you know, opening the files and stuff. Like, if, if you 
offload that to, to you know, the technology, then they're able to work on maybe the exceptions or the more complex issues or you know, things that you do need the human person to kind of like you know, use their brain on. Um, that's probably got to be a better, better job for somebody too, to be in that position than to be in that kind of like just really admin level, ask a question, get an answer position. I totally agree. I think especially solo or small firm attorneys that um, it is an issue when uh, they don't have enough time in the day to do everything. You know, they want to do, want to take on more work. They want mm -hmm. to do more, but they're kind of tied down by uh, the day-to-day -day stuff that they have to do. And with this technology, it can free them from that day-to-day -day, um, chain around their neck and free them up to do the more interesting things and probably make their whole profession, like their whole professional experience more rewarding for them by, you know, freeing them up from that busy work. I love it. Well, I, on that note, I mean, we are running out of time on our Facebook portion here. So if you can stick with us, though, I, I have a lot more questions. Um, I'd love to, you know, if you'd stick with me, ask some more questions, we can put on our YouTube channel in the extended interview, because um, we try to keep our, our Facebook uh, promised our audience around 20 minutes or so. Um, but uh, if you don't mind, that work? Hey, I'd be delighted to stick around. Awesome. Well, uh, before I go, though, um, Tom, where can people uh, find and connect with you? Yeah, so my email address is tom at lawdroid.com, or you could just uh, check out my website at lawdroid.com and learn more about our automation platform and how we can help you out. And uh, one last one is you can follow me on Twitter at lawdroid. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tom. Stick with me one moment. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. And be sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook page so you get notified when our next episode goes live. We have new interviews about law firm marketing and the business side of running your firm here every other Wednesday. We're going to keep on going here in the GNGF studios. You can watch the full extended interview with Tom Martin this Friday over on our YouTube channel. We'll be diving into a lot more detail about where the practice of law is even heading. We'll see you then. Well, Tom, thanks for sticking with me. Yeah, happy to be here, Mark. So um, some of the questions I, I didn't get to, uh, one I wanted to know is, you know, you talk about LawDroid and capturing, going maybe going into like an intake system like uh, Clio Grow or a CRM. How do you differentiate LawDroid from maybe other kind of lead capture solutions? Yeah, I get that often, and I actually have thought th thought about that for a while. Um, the way we're different, really, is that we're a no-code automation platform. So, lead capture is one of the things we do. We think we do it really well, but we can actually automate many different parts of the entire client journey. So it's not just lead capture, although mm -hmm. that's incredibly important, and we focused on it uh, in our go-to-market because we know that that's very close to value for the lawyers, right? They're gonna be making money off of that, that lead if they convert to a client. But the next step about intake, so actually once they, once they become, become a client, in capturing that information and putting it into the case management system, you know, that part's equally important. You need to have that so that when you have your first face-to-face, -face, you know, in-person or video call, you want to be prepared. The milestones throughout the case, those are important to keep in touch with your client. Remember I mentioned communication is probably mm -hmm. the biggest bar complaint. Well, you could really cut against that by communicating well during the case with your client. And then at the end of it, you might have some documents that you generate for your client and also reaching out to ask for reviews. So that entire spectrum of the client experience is what we can help lawyers automate. And that doesn't remove them from the process, it just means that the baseline of what they need is gonna be taken care of. And then they could add you know, gravy, that really specialized experience on top of it. Right, yeah, and again, I, I love this you know, idea of like, it's just, you know that it, you're gonna get the consistent message that you've determined up front is important every step of the way. Uh, I, I'm sure that leads to probably a lot of better referrals too, because that's a much more pleasing experience for, for a consumer, or a client. Um, so what are some of the risks then of, you know, like if you said, you know, there's a digital transformation happening and stuff. There's still a lot of people who are, you know, like nervous or don't have time or haven't implemented. Um, What's what? What are the risks of kind of sticking around and doing it the old-fashioned way? So it's a, I I think that's a great question. Um, 
because it's it's a it's something that's invisible to to lawyers, right? Because if you're doing it the way you've always done it, mm -hmm. then you don't really appreciate the risk because you're used to the risk. Right. That doesn't mean there's no risk. It means that they're invis they become invisible to you because you've become accustomed to them. And so what I see as some of the risks are number one, you might go out of business. You know, things might seem all right, but if you're not doing that perpetual out outreach and communicating and engaging with people, getting them in the door, um, there's only so many t so many hours in the day. Right. And 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 a lawyer, you know, even with staff, can't be there 24/7, 365 to engage with people that might be interested in their services. They just can't do it. So going out of business is one of them. Number two is that the consistent communication that leads to bar complaints. Well, if you want to maintain that consistent communication, again, you can't be there at all hours of the day. So why not have the automated help? Mm -hmm. So beyond communication, I think that another risk is that like I mentioned, when you have this communication with, with a bot, you have a log. You have something to fall back on. You have proof, evidence. Lawyers love evidence. Well, if you don't have that, you don't have evidence. You have he said, she said, and that might not, good, not, that might not be good enough in court to defend yourself. So those are the risks about just doing it the way it's always been done. And um, I wish yeah. that more, more lawyers were aware of that. And it's interesting too, if you think about like it, you know, this is just how change happens over time, right? As more people uh, have this documentation behind them because, hey, I have the chats, I have everything put here. You can see exactly what happened. It's almost going to become the expectation of somebody who doesn't have that. It's like, well, why don't you have that? I mean, you can get this level of information. You should have that level of information. So it almost brings the the expectations of those kind of professional conduct uh, operations and, you know, just general competency up. I agree. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Um, so the the uh, you know the ideas here of you know being a somebody who's you know practice law and now is like you know like a, a legal technology um, uh, you know the throws of all the legal technology companies here going on and you're on Twitter a lot. Uh, I see you out there. You know, like always forwarding and, and and passing on some really information. What are your thoughts on where the practice of law is going in five years with this kind of digital transformation and other things going on? Well, the di digital transformation, which I will get more in depth into in the LawDroid Manifesto, which is coming out in September, um, I think that what we're going to see in five years, and by the way, what we've seen over the past 16 months is probably what we would have seen over the next five years. Yeah. But that said, the next five years, my belief is not, it's not nothing extraordinary. It's just that what we're seeing in legal is going to start to reflect what's happening in the general marketplace. You know, like Fortune 500 companies, they're using this kind of automation day in, day out. It's not a big deal. It's not a big thing. Consumers love it because they get immediate answers to their questions. Right. There's been surveys that show that over 60% of people prefer that because they get immediate answers. And so consumers want it. And that's the way it is right now in every other industry than legal. And that's the way it's going to be in five years. That's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the, the idea of that, like you said, like digital transformation moving so fast in the last, you know, like 16, 18 months, kind of being equivalent to what it sh probably would have been in five years. But now, now we've sped ahead. So I, I love this idea of, but that's what, that's what everybody else is already doing. <laughs> So right. like we think we sped ahead, but really we're still playing catch up, right? In this, in this yeah. uh, profession. So um, I, I did want to kind of like follow along that kind of like legal technology side of thing here. You, you are co-founder of the American Legal Technology Awards. And, uh, you know, obviously you and Jeff were very excited about it and, you know, we happy to jump on as a sponsor and, and love it. But for those that really don't know about uh, this, you know, talk about like one, what it is, but also how it came to be. I think that's a really interesting story. Yeah, I'm happy to do that, and uh, we're very appreciative of GMGF being a sponsor. And, um, you know, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to, to honor those that are really trying to make a difference in the legal industry and to innovate, right? So following through on the message that 
I'll be broadcasting through the Lodroid Manifesto about change in the industry and digital transformation. The American Legal Technology Awards is meant to honor those that are innovating in legal. And so my co-founders are Cat Moon and Patrick Pallas. They're, they're great friends and also co-founders with me. Um, it all started when Patrick and I, we were nominated for an award at the British Legal Technology Awards, uh, which we attended in London over two years ago now. And when we were standing there, because the Brits, they really know how to do it. They have black tie affair. Uh, I mean, it was like going to a wedding, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. They had a comedian on stage who was uh, hosting the event and it was a fantastically fun time. And it, it occurred to both of us that we couldn't understand why we didn't have something like that here in the United States. Right. And the, the thing is, we have a lot of conferences. We have a lot of legal technology conferences, but we don't have it. We don't have a party. Um, and so the idea to have something like the Oscars for legal tech was what we came back with. Now, as, as we all know, COVID kind of put a damper on that. Um, and last year was virtual. This year again is virtual. The awards are going to come out in November. Um, but we're very excited to highlight those companies lawyers, courts, and individuals that are really trying to make a difference in the law for the better. Awesome. Yeah, and I think you sent, um, we have a mug, I think, on our uh, bookshelf back here. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, the American Legal Technology Awards. No, it was great uh, last year. I mean, it, and i uh, very excited. I mean, again, like we're, we're happy to sponsor just because it's trying to show not just the legal technology vendor did something cool, but how people are actually doing something different and trying new things and pushing the envelope a little bit in the legal profession. Like I said, even courts, you know, uh, like that, that was really interesting, you know, some of the judges, what they were doing and, uh, you know, opened my eyes to a lot of the kind of, you know, boots on the ground things happening versus, like you said, the legal technology conferences where things are going, but actually seeing people implementing was, I think, what we were really proud about as a sponsor. So uh, I'm very excited for it. Very excited to, to see the, uh, the, the list of winners here again coming in in November. So very exciting. So thanks so much for, you know, chatting with me uh, and sticking with me for, I know, way longer than we initially planned, but I really appreciate it, Tom. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate being here and getting to talk with you about, about these things. Hey, what's up? I'm Josh. Thanks so much for joining us. If you feel like you learned something today, think of how beneficial it would be to chat with myself or another one of our marketing consultants one-on-one. -on -one. Go ahead and visit our website to schedule your free consultation. It only takes a minute.